How does a whale become a former Russian spy whale? Does it tear up its uh, membership card? Does it start speaking another language? How does it report back to the Russian security services? What were the circumstances in which it resigned from the service? Or is it no longer a whale? Answers on a postcard, please, or on the Twitter, or even on the telephone lines. I mention it only because it does indeed show the depths of absurdity to which the hysterical mendacity of the lie machine that is the Western media has sunk. The same BBC apparently alleged that Roger Waters had a balloon of a pig flying above his concert in Berlin adorned with the Star of David, the Jewish religious symbol. It was a complete lie, as a thousand pictures of the pig from all angles make clear, no such horrific image was ever present in the auditorium. It is telling that such a brazen and gigantic and, I believe, grave defamation could be carried on the British state mouthpiece BBC without consequence, without an apology, without a retraction. The claim is still there, I'm told. And yet, in a way, we can be shocked but not surprised. The effort that is being made to destroy the reputation and destroy the career of the legendary Pink Floyd singer, songwriter, and musician is truly mind-blowing. It is Jeremy Corbyn to the power of 10. It is an international effort to destroy someone for no other reason than that he has dared to speak up from the considerable platform that he commands against pet narratives of the Western oligarchies on the war in Ukraine, on the attempt to invade and occupy and destroy the Syrian Arab Republic, and on the issue of Israel-Palestine. They try to tell you that Roger Waters is a fascist. I read it all day and every day. Roger Waters' father died fighting fascism in Italy in the Second World War. Roger Waters has written and performed some of the most magnificent anti-fascist music that the English-speaking world has ever seen. And that's why he's packing them out all over the world on this tour, and he's in his 70s. Sorry, Roger, if you didn't want that to be known. This man is an icon, a hero, a hero to tens, maybe hundreds of millions of people. In Sao Paulo in Brazil, they've just had to put on an extra night. So many people wanted to pack into the auditorium there. In Berlin, he performed a part of his show that he and Pink Floyd before him have performed for decades called The Wall. You get it? Another brick in the wall. It is an anti-fascist parody, particularly appropriate in Berlin, of all places, I would have thought. Both ancient and modern Berlin, both 1933 to 1945 Berlin, and 2023 Berlin. But up went a hue and cry to try again to cancel his concert in Frankfurt. It failed, and Frankfurt turned in a magnificent packed audience, not a seat to be had at any price, and gave Roger Waters their support. Why am I dwelling on this? Because it shows the desperation of the prevailing orthodoxy, but also how it is failing, failing, failing on every front. 
We're asking in the poll, is Roger Waters being smeared? Overwhelmingly, you all can see it, that he is being smeared. Why mention that? Because it shows how paper thin, as thin as a Belugia whale's skin, is the prevailing narrative in the so-called Western world today. Tito, in the chorus, the cat's chorus, of journalism isn't a crime. As they keep singing, every time they all issue a tweet about a journalist imprisoned in Russia or journalism in general, journalism is not a crime, they sing, these hyenas. Not mentioning that in a London jailhouse, Belmarsh Dungeon, rots. The world's greatest journalist, Julian Assange, another thing that Roger Waters ceaselessly campaigns on. But at least you could say, well, Julian Assange is Australian. He's wanted by the Americans. But Kit Clarenberg is British. He's a British citizen who landed at London Luton Airport just a few days ago. London, in the grip of a crime wave, where if you send your teenage children out on the street to buy a loaf, you're a fool, because the chances of them coming back in a box or bleeding, having been stabbed or shot, are so terribly high. A crime wave that the Metropolitan Police cannot get on top of. Six of the Metropolitan Police's finest plain clothes officers, six of them, were waiting at the foot of the aircraft steps to pounce on a British journalist, a regular guest on this show, Kit Clarenberg, where they questioned him for five hours in an interrogation room under the anti-terrorism laws, asking him his views on inter alia Rishi Sunak. Well, I don't know if Kit has any views at all. Does anybody even care about Rishi Sunak? Six police officers interrogating a journalist about his political views, seizing his property, under the Anti-Terrorism Acts, copying everything on his computer, his phone, God knows what else they did with it, interrogating him about his views on this political issue or that. Kit should have told them to get stuffed. They wanted to arrest him. Go ahead. He should never have spoken to them for five hours, in my view. But he's a decent citizen, was trying to be helpful. Uh, to the Metropolitan Police's finest. These people who tell you journalism is not a crime are seizing journalists. They seized a French journalist at St. Pancras Station just a few weeks before and interrogated him on his attitude to President Macron. Thank God they didn't interrogate me on that subject or half of England for that matter. What business is it of the Metropolitan Police? What Kit Clarenberg thinks about Rishi Sunak? Unless, of course, we have now officially become a police state. I can live with that because I don't live there. Be a police state if you want to. But don't at the same time pretend that you're a free country, that you're a democratic country that you're in fact fighting wars and getting ready to fight more for freedom and democracy. That just makes you a complete hypocrite, capital H, hypocrite. And nobody wants to be a citizen or even a subject of a country whose middle name is hypocrisy. The Americans have let it be known that they do not approve of American weaponry 
and war material being used by the Ukrainian regime to mount attacks on old age pensioners and people tending their allotments on Russian territory. Joe Biden said it was an escalation too far. Macron says, look, we need to negotiate with President Vladimir Putin. We live in a country, in Britain, which thinks the opposite. James Cleverly, the Foreign Secretary of Great Britain, in the past, a personal friend of mine across the political aisle. He stated in public, bluntly, that Kiev was right to launch military attacks on the Kremlin to kill the president of the Russian Federation. Military attacks on the gardeners in the allotments. Drone attacks on old age pensioners housing on the outskirts of Moscow. James Cleverly supports that in public. This is a declaration of war, James. As former President Medvedev made clear, this now makes you, and sadly us, the British, a party to the conflict. If it's legitimate to launch attacks on Putin in the Kremlin, it's legitimate to launch an attack on Rishi Sunak in number 10 Downing Street. Don't you see the road that you have gone down and where it leads? Don't you see that it takes two to tango? That if you've declared war on Russia, they're going to declare war on you? Or are you too uncleverly to fully understand that? Now, I don't want to see Rishi Sunak with a, a missile, a caliber, going down his chimney pot in Downing Street. No, not least because it would harm and kill uh, people I know that work there as police officers and so on. I don't want to see one of these missiles go down the chimney in King Charles Street of the British Foreign Office. Ditto for the same reason and also I wouldn't like to see Mr. Cleverly harmed. But if you are openly, publicly exhorting someone to kill the president of another country, for how long do you think that other country will remain sanguine about you in your fastness in Westminster and Whitehall? Are we led by fools or knaves? And which would be worse? I suppose we could be being led by knavish fools, and perhaps we are. They try to tell you on the BBC that Kosovo is a country. But it is not a country. It has never been a country. It isn't even recognized by members of the European Union as a country. It isn't even recognized by some members of NATO as a country. Countries like Spain have got a problem with the idea that a small part of somebody else's country can declare themselves to be a separate country and get the recognition of the big powers in the Western world for obvious reasons. They never answer me when I ask this simple question. If Kosovo can be declared by NATO as a separate country, why can't Crimea? Why can't the Donbass? Why can't Lugansk, Donetsk? Why can't Kherson? Why can't Odessa? Why can't anybody anywhere declare themselves to be an independent country and gain the recognition of the big belligerent powers in the Western world? They can't answer that question because it has no answer. But the vast majority of countries in the world do not recognize a country called Kosovo, including the United Nations, doesn't recognize it either and never will recognize it. On what basis then 
other NATO forces in what is effectively an illegal occupation of a part of Serbia. Kosovo is in Serbia. That fact will never change. And I know the Serbian people rather well as it happens. I've yet to meet a Serbian who would not give his life's blood to defend the sovereignty of what remains of the once magnificent, multicolored, multi-ethnic, multiracial, multi-religious wonder that was Yugoslavia. Serbia is the last man standing. And if anyone thinks they're going to go quietly into the destruction of the small state of Serbia, they know nothing about Serbians. We'll be talking in the course of the next one hour and 40 minutes to two experts. Professor Glenn Deason is an expert on Yugoslavia, on Serbia, on Kosovo, and as I said, the one and only Scott Ritter, former Marine Intelligence Corps officer, arms inspector, who tried to stop the war on Iraq and who has in vain so far but valiantly trying through no fault of his own to stop a world war erupting over the territory and the bodies of the Ukraine. All that and much, much more coming up in the next hour and 40 minutes here on the Mother of All Talk Shows.